Hello, everyone, and welcome to another special social distancing episode of Late Night. As you can see from the backdrop behind me, I have moved from my hallway to my private study where I sit at night in a smoking jacket with a glass of brandy, pondering life's great mysteries. It looks kind of like this. <gasps> Eureka. And as you can also see, I own my very own back in my day sweater that I wear unironically. So you burnt me. And to be clear, this is definitely my private study and not a garage I've been relegated to because my family has told me in no uncertain terms, I'm not allowed to do my little political rants at the dinner table. Now, I hope you're all staying at home, self-distancing and doing your part to slow the spread, despite the fact that our unhinged president would like to ignore the crisis and return to normal as soon as possible. For more on this, it's time for a closer look. Donald Trump sees everything as a transaction. His first question is always, what do I get out of this? It's what he asked when he was building casinos. It's what he asked when they offered him The Apprentice. And it's what he asked when Eric was born. Great, what did it for me? And even the doctor was like, oh, literally nothing. Nothing, this is a straight up loss for you. That's what happened when he got impeached, remember? You remember that? That huge world historical event that happened approximately, I don't know, like 307 years ago? Talking about the impeachment of Donald Trump feels like talking about going to Radio Shack to pick up a Walkman to listen to the new Tears for Fears album. Back in my day. It was less than four months ago, but it feels like it happened right around the same time Trump popped up in Home Alone 2. Yeah, I'll help you find your parents, kid, but first, you know where I can get some dirt on Joe Biden? It feels impossible to remember this now, but the federal response to a deadly and highly infectious global pandemic is being overseen by a president who was impeached less than four months ago for trying to use foreign aid to a war-torn country to benefit himself politically. As you might recall, immediately after the aid came up on his phone call with the newly elected president of Ukraine, Trump literally said the words, I would like you to do us a favor though. And of course, Trump is the kind of guy who asks you for a favor before he's even met you. He's like a guy messaging a girl he just met on Tinder. Would love to meet you. Can I crash at your place for a few days? I have a fever and a cough, and my roommate kicked me out for using their toothbrush. Also, my roommate is my wife, and I have five kids. So everything with Trump is a transaction in which he seeks to personally benefit himself, whether it's a foreign aid to a war-torn country or a global pandemic. For example, after he was criticized by New York Governor Andrew Cuomo for not sending the state enough ventilators from the federal stockpile, Trump lashed out by claiming it was a two-way street and that governors had to earn help from the federal government by being nice to him. We're building them hospitals, we're building them medical centers, and he was complaining about we're doing probably more, definitely more than anybody else. But he shouldn't be talking about us. He's supposed to be buying his own ventilators. We're going to help. We're working uh, very, very hard for the people of New York. We're working along with him. And then I watch him on the show complaining. We are doing very well with, I think, almost all of the governors. For the most part, I think we're doing very well. But, you know, it's a two-way street. They have to treat us well also. No, they don't. It's your job. They don't owe you anything for doing your job. States don't pay tribute to the president. What gifts have arrived for me today? Well, Mr. President, Alaska sent timber, Maryland sent crabs, and what of New York? They sent the most magnificent creature, sir. He is half man, half baseball. How amusing. Yes, yes, send them two ventilators in return. What makes you like this? This guy's so insecure and self-obsessed, he demands constant praise and validation simply for doing the bare minimum. And if he doesn't get it, he'll just thank himself in a tweet. Imagine being America's dumbest person, somehow getting the highest office in the land and still thinking you're owed something. He's like a dog who expects a treat every time you in the yard. When you let him back in the house, he goes straight to the closet and sits there until you toss him a McNugget. In fact, the Daily Beast reported this week that Trump views his response to the pandemic purely through the lens of who's being nice to him. And as a result of that, he's been swinging wildly back and forth, depending on what Cuomo says about him on any given day. A person who has spoken to the president earlier this month recounted that one day Trump had mentioned in a meeting how well Cuomo was behaving and handling the crisis, only to two days later start bashing the governor in a different private conversation is nasty. There's no telling which Trump you're going to get on any given day. One day he'll be your best friend, the next day he'll hate you. It's like we're trapped in the movie Fight Club. One day we're going to see Trump kicking the crap out of himself in the White House parking lot. The first rule of Fight Club, I get 20% of all bets. Also, I really 
truly hate that Trump uses the word nasty as an insult because it ruins what could otherwise be a fun word. Just once I'd like to see him get up at the podium and use it the way Raven Simone would use it. Everyone remember, don't cough into your hands, because that's nasty. The president is supposed to be a public trust. You're supposed to be able to distinguish between your own personal interests and the duties of the office. Now, sure, every president gets something out of it. Maybe they use it to meet girls or they get a nice Netflix deal. They might even use it to score a sweet job in real estate. 95 years old and still building houses. Jimmy Carter is the yin to Trump's yang. It's like he has to do a good thing for every bad thing Trump does. One house at a time. Every time Trump tweets, Jimmy says, better get my tool belt. So yes, there are benefits to being president, but Trump has taken it to an insane level. He pathologically is incapable of grasping anything other than his own survival. In fact, CNN reported this week that Trump is considering reopening the country prematurely in the middle of a deadly pandemic, partially because he personally is bored inside the White House. I want to bring in CNN's Caitlin Collins live for us from the White House. Caitlin, sources tell you uh, that the president is feeling increasingly isolated at the White House and questioning, eager to have life return to normal. Yeah, he feels like he's been cut off from the outside world, much like the rest of the nation and other parts of the world feel as they are responding to this staying home. Hey man, welcome to the club. We're all stuck inside. Why don't you just do what we're all doing and put on your sweatpants, watch four episodes of Tiger King, try to do an online workout, give up and just drink wine out of a cereal bowl until you pass out. You're not the only one being inconvenienced. Normally I'd be doing my show from a well-lit studio in Midtown Manhattan for 200 people, but instead I'm here in my house trying to get my dog to laugh at my jokes. I got people on Twitter telling me I'm worse at YouTube videos than their teenage daughters. Well, no I'm 46, which probably won't surprise you now that you see what I look like when I'm doing my own makeup. Also, teenage girls are great at YouTube, and I know because I spent half the day watching makeup tutorials on how not to look like a ghost in a bookstore. And you know how hard it is to tell a four-year-old daddy has to go make one of his videos? I mean, it's true, but it sounds like a lie. It sounds like what you'd say before going to the garage to drink alone. I gave him hell today, buddy. I gave him hell in my video. Yesterday I had a take ruined because a bird wouldn't shut up. You know how bad things are when you're having bird troubles? They're bad. So I'm sorry you're bored, stuck in America's most famous house that has its own personal chef in a bowling alley. Boo-hoo. In fact, CNN also reported that Trump is so bored in the White House, he's actually been going to meetings like everyone working from home. Trump has shown evidence of cabin fever, crashing meetings of his coronavirus task force, inserting himself into planned press conferences during daily policy sessions. Aides say they sometimes don't know whether Trump will walk through the door, leading to a general level of uncertainty on what to place on the agenda. So the answer to the riddle, how do you get the president to go to a meeting, is a pandemic. But of course he makes meetings worse. It's amazing to think that if you want to do the actual work of government in the Trump era, you have to hide like a teenage boy with a copy of Maxim. So as you can see here, maximizing testing capacity is the most efficient way to flatten the curve. Oh crap, someone's in here, someone's in here. And there must be a huge difference between having Trump in the meeting and not having him in the meeting. If he's not there, you can dive deep into the weeds of public health and epidemiology. If he's there, you have to rewrite the agenda. So the first item is coronavirus. Did Obama start it alone or did Hillary help? My personal take is it looks like a two man job, but you guys are the scientists. OK, I'm going to go give the Lincoln portrait another shaving cream beard. I'm going to cream you, Lincoln. Also, it's really got to suck for everyone else in the White House now that Trump is trapped inside and showing up to meetings. It's like trying to work from home while babysitting your kids. Next time Mike Pence Skypes into a meeting, Trump's going to wander into the room behind him in a baby walker. Well, Trump apparently resented the implication that he was bored while holed up in the White House because yesterday he lashed out on Twitter, writing, I hear that fake news CNN just reported that I am isolated in the White House, wondering out loud when life will return to normal. Does anybody really believe that? There was no leak. They made it up. They are corrupt in fake news. I have been packed all day with meetings. I have no time for stupidity. This is the age of coronavirus. Being packed in meetings is stupidity. So many meetings today. Each one with more people. Each one in a smaller room. Sharing one pen. Stupidity is all you have time for. You spend so much time in stupidity, you literally got the country's leading infectious disease expert, the widely respected doctor, in charge of fighting a global pandemic to touch his face in exasperation during one of your inane press conferences. That's how annoying you are. You made the guy whose job it is to tell people not to touch their faces touch his face. That's like getting a librarian to yell at you, shut the up. 
Karen, I've never heard you raise your voice before. He just, he broke me. How? He just kept holding up Moby Dick and asking me, do you get it? But do you? Nonetheless, it's clearly the case that Trump is desperate to prematurely stop the fight against the coronavirus pandemic in order to appease the stock market. Because when the green arrow goes up, all the business schools around him tell him how great he is. And that's what he lives for. Someone should just show him the chart of coronavirus cases in the U.S. and tell him it's the Dow Jones. We did it, you guys. High five. High five. What? Why not? Oh, right. Right. The coronavirus from the meeting. Trump doesn't care for a minute that the outbreak is accelerating and growing deadlier by the day. Nurses and doctors on the front lines have compared hospitals to war zones and called the situation apocalyptic. And yet, on Wednesday, Trump suggests the media was trying to force him to keep public health restrictions in place to hurt him politically. Let me put the tweet up. The lamestream media is the dominant force in trying to get, get me to keep our country closed as long as possible in the hope that it will be detrimental to my election success. The real people want to get back to work ASAP. We will be stronger than ever before. You think this is all a big conspiracy to hurt your reelection chances? You know what? If you think it's all a conspiracy, then why don't you go outside and ask a bunch of people to cough on you? Just go out onto the streets of D.C. with a mic and give people a dollar to cough on you. You can call it bully on the street. This is a truly dangerous moment to have a paranoid narcissist who's incapable of grasping anything other than his own self-interest in charge of the federal government. In fact, yesterday, as the outbreak was only accelerating and healthcare professionals were begging for supplies, the president decided it was a good time to pat himself on the back and pick fights with multiple reporters. And you said that the media wants the country to remain closed to hurt your own. No, no, no. I think the media, elected. yeah, no, the media would like to see me do poorly in the election. I think, so I think. Lawmakers and economists on both sides of the aisle have said that reopening the country by Easter is not a good idea. What is that plan based on? Just so you understand. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. I think there are certain people that would like it not to open so quickly. I think there are certain people that would like it to do financially poorly because they think that would be very good as far as defeating me at the polls. I think it's very clear that there are people in your profession that write fake news. You do. She does. There are people in your profession that write fake news. We've done one hell of a job. Nobody's done the job that we've done. And it's lucky that you have this group here right now for this problem. Or you wouldn't even have a country left. I'm sorry, but why the hell are we still airing these things? He's not saying anything valuable. He's just calling out reporters one by one like an insult comic at a nightclub. Women love to shop. This lady knows what I'm talking about. Also, she nasty. We wouldn't have a country left. I don't know if you've been outside lately, but we can't even go outside lately. Thanks to you, we barely have a country left. We have pieces of a country. Trump's like the house sitter you hire who throws a party at your place while you're gone. And when you get back, hands you a plastic bag full of pieces of an expensive vase. All the pieces are there. You just, uh, you need to glue New Jersey back on Pennsylvania. And on top of the fact that we have a president lying about a public health crisis and spreading dangerous misinformation, some in the Republican Party also tried to use the crisis to punish working Americans. A group of GOP senators objected to a provision in the stimulus bill that gives workers $600 extra on top of their usual unemployment benefits and introduced an amendment last night to strip that out, claiming it would incentivize people to go on unemployment rather than go back to work. The moment we can go back to work, we cannot create an incentive for people to say, I don't need to come back to work because I can do better someplace else. Uh, so we cannot be paying people more money uh, on unemployment with it than what they would get paid in their job. We cannot encourage people to make more money in unemployment than they do in employment. If you're a nurse aide making 15 or $16 an hour, you're on the front lines here. So you're going to have all these well-trained nurses that are going to make $24 an hour on unemployment. You're literally incentivizing taking people out of the workforce. I'm sorry, you think nurses who are on the front lines of a pandemic are suddenly going to quit their jobs because they could get an extra 600 bucks? Dude, you're telling on yourself. All that does is reveal you care more about money than your job. If someone offered me 600 bucks, I'd quit my job and spend my days sitting on my porch in my rocker, drinking a mint julep and a big straw hat and gossiping with my dog, Biscuit. You didn't hear from me, Biscuit, but Miss Beauregard's cat is only pretending to be spayed. She's hoping to get knocked up by one of those wealthy cats that live at the country club. <laughs> 
So in response to that, Senator Bernie Sanders took to the floor of the Senate last night to fight for the expanded unemployment benefits in a fiery speech that he did not hold back. And now I find that some of my Republican colleagues are very distressed. They're very upset that somebody who's making 10, 12 bucks an hour might end up with a paycheck for four months more than they received last week. Oh my God, the universe is collapsing. Imagine that. Somebody who's making 12 bucks an hour, now like the rest of us, faces an unprecedented economic crisis with the 600 bucks on top of their normal, their regular unemployment check, might be making a few bucks more for four months. Oh my word, will the universe survive? Man, I love, I love sarcastic Bernie. It's so refreshing to see a politician who's as pissed off as everyone else is right now. He lit into those Republicans like his bratty grandchildren were complaining they couldn't look at their phones at the dinner table. Oh, oh my God, the universe is collapsing. How will I survive without my ticks and my talks? You know, when I was young, we didn't have emojis. We just had to make faces ourselves like this. Now you know I'm surprised. The president is a threat to public health. He's incapable of distinguishing between his own personal interests and the duties of his office. And he uses his daily platform on national TV to spread misinformation and air petty grievances. No one watching these press conferences actually learns anything. In fact, if you watch Trump talk for any amount of time, you end up asking yourself sincerely, Oh my word, will the universe survive? This has been A Closer Look. Stay safe, wash your hands, we love you.